this clip, I will be taking you step by step through how you can create a painting either in one color or what we know as monochrome. I will show you how you can create a tonal card which will help you make your color choices and I will also show you how you can create an image using PowerPoint. We will be using a reference image which you can find in the description below and then I will take you step by step through how I painted this portrait using watercolors. So let's get on with the tutorial. So as we are going to be learning about painting in monochrome or monotone, we're going to firstly look at how we can get the different shades in one color. And today I'm going to be using Prussian blue. And I'm going to be looking at how you can get these different colors or tones. So what we're going to look at is how we can go from a different gradient from light to dark. Now I could have gone from dark to light, but I think it's easier to get the subtle tones if you go from light to dark. So I've started with the water and I'm adding a tiny amount from the Prussian blue pan to the water. And each time I'm adding a tiny amount from the pan to this color and then I'm adding that to the water. And as you can see, the color gets slightly darker as we move up the tonal chart. If you're not used to painting in this way, it's a really useful exercise for you to do this before you start on your final painting because it helps you with controlling the paint and also it's a useful reference for making your color choices on your final painting. Remember, this tonal exercise will work with any color. So it may be that you want to use red or green or purple or brown. Brown would look really good because you get sepia tone, which means you would get that old fashioned effect. So you can use any color for this. You don't want to, you don't have to use blue, but I particularly like the color blue. So that's why I chose that color for today's exercise. <laughs> So now as we come towards the end of our tonal value chart, you can see that the colors are very dark in the middle. They're kind of much of a muchness. But for the last tone, I have just added water directly to the pan to get the darkest tone. And this is your tonal value chart when it has dried, which you can see it's slightly lighter. But this will help you with your tonal choices when you come to your final painting. Now we're going to talk about a simple way that you can change your image to a particular color tone in PowerPoint. It can be done in Photoshop, but this is a much easier way to do it. So what you need to do is you need to crop your image down to your desired size. You then go to the image palette at the top and then you can choose your desired color. If you wanted to choose a particular color, you need to go to the color palette. But this is a really straightforward and easy way to change your color if you are struggling with making those color choices with the actual reference image. And obviously you don't need to use this reference image. You could have a landscape, you could have a picture of an animal, you could use any image that you like, but I find this a really easy way to change your image into color tones rather than going into Photoshop, which is a great package, but this is a much easier way to change your image. Today I am painting this image on hot press watercolour paper because I want it to use a smooth finish. I usually use that for portraits and I am using the Windsor and Newton Cotman palette. If you want to find out more about that then I have a review of that so if you want to click on the card above you can do. So I'm starting by painting the background wet on wet technique and to make it look more interesting because there's a blurry background I am adding some salt and you will see in a moment that it creates an interesting effect. <clears throat> I'm also adding water to the areas where I am going to be painting next and that again is going to be the wet on wet technique because I want to add a soft area and I want my colours to blend and be softer. So that is why I'm using that particular method. And then when I want to add the details, I will be using the wet on dry technique. I'm also, when the areas haven't gone the way I want them to go exactly like here, I use a cotton bud just to bring them back to the way I want them to be.
So now that the surface has completely dried, I'm gently brushing off all of the salt and I will make sure that I have it all taken off before I start my next painting. I also need to make sure that it's completely off of the area where I'm painting because I've had, I have one speck of salt on that painting. It will expand like it has done on the area above. So I'm now adding in more areas with a mixture of wet on wet technique and wet on dry because I want to paint all the details in and get those darker tones. You should remember that when you are painting with watercolour, you need to start light and then build up darker because if you start with the darker tones like with acrylic or oil paints it's very difficult to take those dark areas away so you should always start with your lighter tones and then finish with the darker tones So I'm now going in with a smaller brush and adding details with the paint and I'm just adding a tiny amount of pet water directly to the pan so I'm getting the darkest paint possible. This is because I'm adding details to the eyes and to the hair so I want my paint to be as dark as possible and with the hair because the model has dark hair I'm going over and I do a second and third layer. So now that I've finished the painting stage, I'm going to add finishing touches. Now, because I want to stay on the one color theme, I'm going to add 
finishing touches with a Prismacolor pencil and I'm using blue indigo because that's the closest color that I could find to the Prussian blue. And I'm just going to add some final tones, some areas to the hair, some finer details and some areas to the eyes just to add some final touches and some final details. If you enjoyed this clip then make sure you check out more clips like this in the watercolour and portrait playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of products used in today's clip and if you have any ideas for content or questions then leave a comment below. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content.